What if I told you that there was once a truck that was the epitome of minimalism and reliability? This first gen Toyota Tacoma is about as base model as it gets. Manual windows, manual gearbox, no cruise control, and no air conditioning. This model didn't even come with a tachometer. But Toyota's main focus wasn't flair, it was creating a robust design that would withstand the test of time. This old truck's age may show in its looks, but at the heart of this beast stands Toyota's 2RZ engine that's still running strong. So with the clock hitting 230,000 miles, what would be the next obvious step in this old girl's life? Well, adding a turbocharger, of course. <laughs> Look at this beast! Oh my god. What's up guys? Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to take an awesome truck that's super reliable and make it unreliable because I'm irresponsible and you know when I finish a build I usually wait a month or so and then I get bored and then I get this crazy idea in my head. But I've been doing research. What's really cool about the two RZs is that the ECU and the injector size and the fuel pump size and stuff can support about five pounds of boost without any engine management system or anything aftermarket or like a piggyback ECU. So I decided, let's do it, let's turbo it, right? So <laughs> what I have here is a spread of all the parts that I think that I need to turbo the truck. Uh, and it's actually not that bad. So we're gonna see. First off, the turbo that I got, the wastegate opens a little bit later and because we're only running about five pounds of boost, um, I wanted to get a wastegate that opens at exactly 5 psi, so adjustable arm because it's more of like a universal style wastegate. Comes with a bunch of different brackets, uh, which I think I found one of them already just kind of test fit and stuff that works really well that I might only have to modify a little bit to get it to work. Okay. Got a catch can here. An atmosphere venting catch can because what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the PCV system, that's the recirculative uh, PCV system, and then we're just going to go with an atmospheric venting catch can, oil turbo, uh, turbo oil drain and pressure line with some reusable uh, AN fittings, uh, intake that adds like 50 horsepower um, with an adapter for the MAF. We have a boost gauge, Bosch, of course. An AM uh, air fuel ratio gauge, which my, <laughs> my race car doesn't even have one of these, so this thing's pretty special. Just so we can monitor the AFRs and make sure that we're not gonna lean the thing out, blow it up. Uh, and then, da -da 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 -da, the turbo. So this is a turbo off of an RB20 DET. It is the like a single turbo setup for an RB20. Uh, and my buddy had one laying around and was never gonna use it. And I was like, hey, let me use that because this is like perfect for the truck. Cause this came off of a two liter. The truck's a 2.4 liter. So, and because we're only using basically the bottom end of the, the flow efficiency of the turbo, we should be okay and it should spool really quick and we'll have lots of fun with it. Um, so this is an internal wastegate turbo, so we're gonna have to do something fancy with the back of that. I have ideas for that later. Um, what I've got on it so far is my um, restrictor kit. I got an oil journal bearing uh, pressure line restrictor kit. It's got a one millimeter orifice in it uh, to keep the oil from going full pressure and uh, dropping the oil pressure in the engine and then of course you know spewing oil out of the journal bearing seals. And then uh, we got our drain back flange on here already. This is a $200 eBay uh, tubular manifold kit with a T3 flange because these are T3s, standard flange, super cool. So that's pretty neat. 
See how that does, which is because we are internal wastegate, we're gonna have to make a cap for this too. And then this, the Nissan style has a three bolt flange. So I just got an adapter that goes from a three bolt flange to uh, something we can clamp a, a coupler onto. Over here we have LC Engineering's EGR Delete Kit. And this comes with the block off plates. And the reason why I'm doing an EGR delete is because the flange where the EGR pipe recirculates from the exhaust uh, is on the manifold, the factory manifold. And since we're gonna go with this manifold, we don't have a flange for the EGR pipe anymore. So we gotta delete all that. Uh, and this kit comes with all your hardware. It comes with the two block off plates, which we're only gonna be using the one that goes on the manifold. And then it also comes with two different resistors so that you can trick the EGR temp sensor into thinking that it's running uh, happy all the time. So we'll play around with that so that the, the um, check engine light doesn't come on. Um, and then I got a, some vacuum line cap kits because of all the vacuum lines we're gonna be deleting for the PCV and the EGR delete. Um, and then I bought some check valves. These are just aluminum check valves for like a fuel system, but it can also work uh, with our uh, vacuum system. The reason why I bought check valve is because a car that is not designed to run a turbocharger, uh, the vacuum system isn't really set up for uh, pressure, positive pressure to be run in the manifold. So there's some things that we're gonna have to cap off like the brake booster uh, and some other things for like the, uh, the idle air control valve, we need to cap those pressure on so that they, we don't lose pressure out of those uh, pipes when the car is building boost. So we'll get to that. Um, I got this adapter here. This is the drain back because we have a pressure uh, of spot to pull uh, for the pressure line for the turbo, but for the drain back, we gotta go right back into the oil pan. So I got this nifty little guy here. It's a, uh, most people drill a hole and then weld an AN adapter, like a dash 10 AN adapter. This one, is like a bulkhead fitting uh, with dash 10. So we just drill a hole and we basically just uh, tighten this guy down. It's got some face seal, like O-ring face seal washers. And that way we don't have to weld into our oil pan. Last but not least, I got a bunch of intercooler piping that I had left over from previous projects. So we should be able to shift stuff around, maybe weld some things together to make that work. Uh, the only thing I didn't have is couplers. So I'm still waiting for one coupler to do the intake. Uh, but these are the couplers that should get me from basically from the turbo to the, it goes this way, to the throttle body. So, uh, and I am for budget reasons and just simplicity. I'm not gonna be running an intercooler on this uh, just because really when you're only running around, uh, you know, anything below like eight PSI, you're not really generating enough heat in the compression of the inlet air to really see the benefits of having an intercooler and we're running such low pressure and it temps that I think it's gonna be okay. We'll heat wrap the intake pipe and the charge pipe and stuff so that we don't get a ton of heat soak from the engine, but it's gonna keep it simple, keeps it cheap. Uh, the other thing is I'm not gonna run a blow off valve, so we're gonna hear all kinds of cool compressor surgy type things, so it's gonna be really neat. Money wise, I've got $600 in parts laying right here, right? So, super cheap. I think we can turbo this truck for under $1,000 and have lots of fun with it and hopefully not break things, we'll see, but uh, you never know, it's the way it goes. Let's get started. order of business to remove our cracked rusty old manifold and test fit our new eBay turbo manifold.
All right, so it looks like we ran into our first fitment issue here. It is about like a quarter of an inch off on this one side, and that's toward the back of the motor. And the flange, uh, the turbo manifold is the same way, so we need to shave off some material on the flange or open the hole up, and then we need to shave off some material on the gasket to make it work. After using the old gasket to mark the difference in the holes, it's time to break out the trusty Dremel to grind a perfect fitment into our parts. fitment up here uh, everything's actually looking pretty good we have plenty of room around the turbo obviously um, only things that I can foresee is an issue is obviously our coolant line here for our upper radiator hose we're gonna have to reroute that another way which I can maybe extend this extend it this way or maybe go you know route it underneath the bottom we'll have to figure that out in a little bit um, and then the exhaust looks like it's going to be fairly easy because all we're going to have to do is lob this flange off of the rest of the system and then make a flange for the back side of the turbo and then run the pipe from the turbo and downpipe right into that the rest of the exhaust. So that should be fairly simple. And then our intake piping, um, I left all this stuff loose so I can clock this the way that I wanted. And then it uh, looks like all we're going to have to do is maybe run a 90, 90 and then straight into the intake. It's gonna be super simple. To finalize the mounting of our new turbo manifold, we need some custom parts that you can't quite find in the parts store. So it's off to the machine shop for some programming and machining. So this is one of the flanges that I made at the shop, all machined out, ready to go. So this is to block off our wastegate flange here because this little manifold that I bought off eBay comes with the wastegate flange. But uh, this thing already has an internal wastegate on the turbo so I didn't really want to run an external wastegate just because it increases the cost to buy a wastegate and all the piping and whatnot. So. Looks like it's perfect, so we're just going to find some hardware, bolt the bad boy together, and then we can put the manifold back in the truck and torque it down for the last time. get oil pressure from the engine to the top of the turbo look on the forums and this oil filter adapter down here has a a plug typically right here for where they drill this cross hole and this is where you pull pressure from for the turbo so basically all I did is I went online I measured the threads of the plug and it's M16 by 1.5 so I just got an M16 by 1.5 adapter to a dash 4 an sick okay so our little uh, universal wastegate we got here the hole ended up being a little bit bigger than uh, than the shaft that comes off the little wastegate arm so I made this spacer that takes up the difference and it's flange so it holds it on press that on there so all I'm gonna do is take my welder and just throw a tack right there right in the middle of it to hold it on and we're good to go for the wastegate with the 
wastegate mounted and tested, we can bolt up the turbo for the last time and connect our oil pressure line.